My name is Crystal Martin, and I'd like to talk about work that Ju Han Yoon and I did at UC Santa Barbara. If you're part of Halos 21, you'll want to listen to this because we're talking about a nearby edge on galaxy, NGC 891, that is a great place to study the interaction of star formation, the interstellar medium, and the circumgalactic medium. Previous work on this galaxy has shown the existence of a thick disk with an advection-dominated um, cosmic ray wind, um, an H1 spur, a fairly pristine material that's being accreted by the galaxy. We looked at this galaxy with Spitzer MIPS at 24 microns and Herschel Pax and Herschel Spire and mapped out the dust properties and found a hot bubble of gas from a thermally driven wind that's uh, quite independent from the cosmic ray driven wind and also a dust spur that I will argue is due to um, a satellite interaction and is quite distinct from the event that caused the H1 spur. So here's the main scoop in a color map of the dust. Inside the molecular ring, you see very hot dust in the star forming region. And directly above that is a hot bubble. And the thermal dust emission coincides uh, very closely here with these black contours from the soft X-ray emission from Chandra. And this is why we call it a dusty superbubble. In contrast, if you compare the the dusty bubble to these black contours of non-thermal x-ray emission, they really don't show the same shape at all. And this is why we say that the thermally driven bubble is quite distinct from the cosmic ray driven outflow. So why is this thermally driven bubble breaking through the disk? We can compare it to several breakout criteria that are in the literature. It's interesting, even though the star formation rate in NGC 891 is a bit higher than the Milky Way, the galaxy does not meet the canonical threshold of 0.1 solar masses per year per kiloparsec squared. It also does not have a high enough gas fraction to meet this threshold that's been suggested in some models for turbulent driven winds. It does meet the threshold that at a height of a few scale heights above the disk plane, the expansion velocity of the shell is greater than the sound speed. So what happens to this outflow is it interacts with the surrounding circumgalactic medium. We look to Cassie's model here for guidance. And as the contact discontinuity between the expanding outflow and the circumgalactic medium moves outward, it eventually stalls as it reaches zero velocity and turns around and falls in for most reasonable density profiles for the circumgalactic gas. If you make the gas profile as steep, as r to the minus 3 at large radii, you can get it to keep going and not turn around. So this is a, a bubble that goes out quite far um, to several hundred kiloparsecs and then turns around and falls back. The dust spur is quite an enigmatic feature. Um, we first saw it in 24 micron MIPS data, couldn't understand what it was, decided maybe it was a detector artifact, and then we confirmed its presence in Herschel data and believe it is thermal emission from dust that's being pulled out of the disk of NGC 891. It's quite distinct from the H1 spur on the opposite side of the galaxy, both in terms of its morphology and the basic fact of the contrast in composition. The H1 spur okay, is detected in 21 centimeter emission and not detected in thermal dust emission. Hence, it probably has quite low metallicity and is material that is falling into the galaxy for the first time. The dust spur, right, is detected in the thermal dust emission, is not detected in 21 centimeter emission. Presumably, gas associated with the dust is more ionized. The composition in terms of the dust to gas ratio, or the limit thereof, is consistent with material in the plane of the disk of NGC 891 that has been pulled out. And simulations suggest this would require a satellite with a dark matter halo in order for an object to go through the disk and pull material out the other side. And that's what we're suggesting happened, and that that material will eventually be incorporated into the disk of NGC 891. Here's a short summary. Thank you for listening.